yeah, remember to continue to fight for your individuality because at the end of the day, we're going to be infinitely more complex than any computer chip ever will be. I'm currently in front of 1515 3rd Street, San Francisco, California, where tech giant OpenAI recently made a landmark real estate acquisition. OpenAI is best known for creating the AI platform ChatGPT, firing and subsequently rehiring their CEO, and being the bane of existence for English teachers everywhere. The Harvard Graduate School of Education reports that as of 2024, about half of young people aged 14 to 22 report using generative AI like ChatGPT at one point or another. In response to this, universities have ushered swift AI prevention policies, often regulating it to basic formatting or idea gathering. Yet, critics of generative AI claim that students may come to rely on it at a rate that significantly harms their educational development and experience. But in order to dissect this phenomenon, we must first define what generative AI is. AI is, I mean, it stands for in, in artificial intelligence, and um, it's used in a lot of technology. Obviously, a lot of students use it. A lot of technology that curates answers or curates whatever you give it and creates that's something that is created by a non-human to answer or give information or create its own database logarithm um, or process that is non-natural to the human mind some people say it's like the end of the world or it's like oh it's gonna take your jobs to me it's more of like a very strong pattern recognition tool this would be the part where I reveal that my script was written with the use of generative AI. But it's not. And not because I didn't try, but because I forgot my login. Speaking of usage, it's no secret that with the ever-living stress of the college experience, generative AI has been a godsend to countless overworked and underappreciated undergrads. Whether it be for checking answers or completing entire assignments, the use of generative AI in universities is anything but a secret. I'm a STEM major, so I think that should say a lot in itself. I use it to recheck my answers. I ask it for help, honestly, when I have no one there, when I'm studying for myself. Uh, I ask it to help explain why I got this wrong. I even sometimes like, just drops a whole like, history of my emails and I'm just saying analyze my emails. I use ChatGPT for like half my assignments. Um, but my teacher actually, at least for my cognitive science class, she approves ChatGPT as long as you cite it and rewrite it in your own way. Universities have all tackled the use of AI in a variety of different ways. Many have actually embraced AI and its future by promoting their workshops, research labs, and other programs to those on a tech-driven path. Cal is no different. For example, at Cal, there is the Berkeley AI Research Lab, led by the likes of Peter Abiel, Peter Barlet, Trevor Durrell, and other AI hotshots who ignored my emails. But one organization did respond to my emails. This is Mira Bali, president of Generative AI at Berkeley, a club at Berkeley that boasts work with the likes of Quizlet, OpenAI, Microsoft, and more. She's gracious enough to reveal some of the mysticisms surrounding generative AI and its potential future. So in terms of generative AI, um, I think the pros are just, you know, for lack of a better term, like maybe like reduced to busy work. There's a lot of summarization. There's a lot of like just general applications of generating something based on a trend or having some prior sort of information and using that to sort of have any sort of results um, that you can do with generative AI. You can use it for like, legal systems to perhaps look at prior court cases to figure out, you know, what you want to, what kind of a hearing you want to sort of give based on that. And obviously you shouldn't rely fully on an LLM for that because there's hallucinations. Um, but, you know, you can use that as like something as a tool. In terms of the cons, um, well, well, there's definitely, I think specifically like talking about perhaps the art industry and, you know, uh, that side of things, there's definitely been a lot of very, very valid concerns about sort of maybe the regulation of generative AI, right? You have all this information available on the internet, available all over that, you know, artists themselves have posted. Um, and then you're sort of using that to train these models, specifically text to image models. Um, and then they're able to sort of, you know, because the models were pretty good, they're able to generate an image exactly in a specific artist style, right? Um, and then, but the artists themselves who put their like paintings or drawings or whatever visuals out there is getting not really no credit for that. As someone who's studying CS, I think any new technology always has some pros and cons, right? Um, but I don't think we should ever sort of stop innovation or stop the full use of technology because at the end of the day, I think or I like to believe at least that we can make our society such or have raw laws or like regulations or rules such that the pros can outweigh the cons. The world of higher education is in a scary place right now, teeming with unemployment, competition, and obnoxious LinkedIn posts. But like it or not, the game is set, and the least one can do is try their best. So while AI may be a tool for some, there's always a slight chance the real tool lies in front of the screen. For CalTV News, I'm Alexis Rico, and I'll see you next time.